What's up, War Report family? We are back with another great edition of the Auburn Express, powered by the War Report. I want to thank everybody for making the Auburn Express uh, part of your day. Uh, joining me, as he always does, is my guy Chris Phillips from SEC Unfiltered. Chris, what's going on? You've been busy. You, you've been at all the big games here so far this season. <laughs> Mike, what's going on, man? It's always a pleasure, man. I look forward to this conversation <laughs> every single That's week. Right. It's just like one of those things, right? Like, you know, there's certain things that let you know this is close or that is happening. This just lets me know, man, we're off to another great week of college football. And like you said, yeah, I mean, it's the run that we're on in the SEC Unfiltered Tour, Mike, will be, will be talked about for years to come, dare I say. Four straight weeks with Bama, Georgia, uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, Ole Miss, and then Tennessee, Bama this past weekend. Three straight field rushes. Listen, your team might be next. I'm headed to Nashville, Vandy, Texas. If Diego Pavi and the boys might pull the upset, they're going to start accusing me of some things. And I think yeah. some fan bases might start paying me to either come or stay away. LSU fans, by the way, begged me not to go to College Station this week mm. in fear they might be the next victim. So we'll see. Uh, well, look, let's let's jump into these power rankings. As always, we take a look back at the week before, Chris. Uh, week eight, yeah, Texas at one, Georgia at two. One and two battled it out this weekend. Mm -hmm. LSU yeah. at three, the surging LSU Tigers. Alabama at four, Texas A&M at five, Tennessee at six. Uh, the surprising Vanderbilt Commodores at seven, Arkansas at eight. Uh, they fell this weekend. Uh, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Mizzou. South Carolina, and then rounding that out with Florida, OU, Auburn, and Mississippi State. Uh, let's jump forward to week nine. Down uh, go the tide. Oh, like, down man. go the tide. Wow. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to switch it one more time so we can watch the drop. Like, boom, four, nine. Oh, the Kalen oh. DeBoer effect. Oh, so beautiful, goodness. isn't it? Yes, it is beautiful. It was so <laughs> sweet. It was like it was like the sweetest peach in the bunch. Like, you know, <laughs> so great. Uh, so awesome. Uh, but – Obviously, the big news of the weekend was one and two in week eight for you battled it out. Georgia and Texas. Uh, Georgia took belt to ass. Let's start there. These five nerds on college game day all <laughs> picked Texas. And I'm like, does anybody remember that Kirby has one million five stars? This guy hasn't lost a regular season game to any team not named Bama in three years. That was, I thought it was crazy how confident they were that Texas was going to win that game. What Georgia did to them on the road in their house was absolutely R rated. Mm. Chris, thoughts? Yeah, it made me feel, Mike, a little bit better about the fact that <laughs> all three of us at SEC Unfiltered that make our picks weekly. We all also went with the Texas long. I couldn't believe none of us were going oh, with Georgia. I felt. <laughs> I felt badly about it. We all, Mike, all three of us went with Texas by double digits to show mm. you how far off we were. So I'm glad to eat crow on that. Listen, I missed that by a mile. But, uh, you know, I, I had a fair reasoning. I took Georgia at Bama and they burned me. And I was like, you know, I just, I don't know. I got to, but I learned my lesson. The, the demise of Georgia was greatly over-exaggerated. Like you mentioned, Mike, that was, that was belt to ass. Kirby Smart reminded us why he is, in my opinion, the best coach in college football. There's yeah. nobody better in those type of situations getting their team motivated, fired up, ready to play. And, you know, despite a crazy pass interference overturning that I've never seen before, and probably you haven't either, uh, Georgia just established their dominance. That one, even with Texas' second half comeback, I, I never really felt like it was in doubt. So, um, again, Georgia just reminded us, Mike, they are the creme de la creme when it comes to college football. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It, it was It was so – it was such a big game. All the hype was there. You, Matthew McConaughey is on the side. You got stars everywhere. And then water bottle gate. <laughs> <laughs> the referees do something absolutely unprecedented and they turn over a call made on the field after the crowd throws objects into the end zone. Uh, to me, this is a complete embarrassment for the SEC. Mm. It's an embarrassment for Texas. You know, I, I filmed a, a, a radio segment earlier today, and um, this former Georgia quarterback that said, instead of a fine, they should penalize the team. Like, just 15-yard penalty. When you buy a ticket, it's a contract, mm. and you agree to behave in a certain manner, and if you're the home team and your fans do like something something like that, I think you should absolutely be penalized. 
Yeah, that helped nip it in the bud for sure. I mean, it's – I wish I could say there's a solution, Mike. I mean, I, I've been seeing this for a long time. I'm not Maybe not in the level and not in a high-profile game like Texas, but, I mean, I, I've seen it at other schools. And I'm not condoning it, by the way. I'm just saying I don't know what a real solution to, like, stop it for good is because it was coming, I'm assuming, from the student section. And, I mean, yeah, good luck. Good luck corralling them. I mean, it's – well. You, you they know. did issue a statement saying they did. They did like, take it to get revoked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, we've identified some of the perpetrators, and we're going to continue to. I mean, work. Do the same, the same out. exact thing happened at Tennessee a few years ago. And I mean, I was talking. I stayed with my buddies in Knoxville over the weekend. They were like, "Dude, we were in the stadium, and they sent that out to everybody because I think they were students at the time." And I mean, yeah, man, it just it's so it's happened before. It's 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 a shame when it does. It's a black eye, but. um yeah, I mean, I, I think the bigger story, and it, it kind of summarized Texas tonight. I mean, they lost that game in many ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back to the rankings here because I want to talk about uh, some other risers. Uh, LSU rose to two in your rankings this mm-hmm. week. Um, and uh, from what I can see here, that's up from three. Now, obviously, they came off a big win at Ole Miss uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I've been high on LSU. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, our guy Nuss is doing a great job there, just making plays when they need them. They took down Arkansas. Arkansas has been been a tough out for a lot of teams this uh, this uh, this year. Uh, so they're they're doing a little better, maybe than some anticipated two and two in the SEC. That made LSU three and zero in the SEC. So right now, uh, looking at the standings, you've got LSU, Texas A and M, and uh, undefeated in the conference. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, is Vanderbilt undefeated in the conference? Vanderbilt oh, no, lost to Missouri. Home. Lost to Missouri in overtime. That okay, was the yeah, overtime yeah, you're right, game. You're right. Yep. You're right. You're right. They did lose to Missouri. I don't know why. Which all of a sudden, an overtime win over Vandy looks like a pretty darn good win. <laughs> <laughs> it looks oh. like a pretty good win. Strange times we're living in Strange here. Strange times indeed. Strange times. Uh, but uh, And in Florida, put 48 on Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So you've got them rising to 12. Uh, here in these rankings. But before we get to Auburn, I want to stick with kind of the middle of the pack here. Again, you put Vandy at six. Let's talk about the Vanderbilt mm-hmm. Commodores uh, ahead of Ole Miss and South Carolina and obviously Alabama. You have valued the head-to-head here, Chris. You value the head-to-head a lot. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think Vandy's a good football team. I know that sounds yeah. weird to say, and it's, it's strange, but welcome to the year of our Lord 2024 where – Clark Lee is probably on track to win coach of the year. Certainly if they do the unthinkable this weekend and the SEC unfiltered tour continues to, which by the way, again, Mike, if, if my God, I just, we'll get there in a second. But anyways, if they find a way and Diego Pavia can lead them to a victory, I mean, this is, they're going to only reaffirm what we've thought, which is they are a good football team. Um, You know, it's, I, I think the thoughts of man was the Bama game a fluke. They followed up the following week. And I know that Kentucky is not all that great, but, Still, you go on the road, you beat Kentucky, uh, you followed up the right way. And I mean, I just I, I think you look at the job Clark Lee has done. I think you look at the creativity they've implemented on the offensive side. Yeah, the very creative. It's it's very just difficult. It's difficult to stop. It's not something you see normally. And they've got they got the right trigger man in Diego Pavia. He doesn't turn the football over. Obviously, a dual threat guy. And then I think defensively, the best thing they ever did was Clark Lee taking over the defense. So I mean, listen. Will Vandy? There's probably going to be a lot of movement and volatility in these rankings as there are every single week. Sure. Vandy's going to have an opportunity, but I mean, listen, even if they go out there and give Texas a good fight, like I, I don't know how much movement there will be. We'll have to see what happens with the rest of the, you know, rest of the rankings. But I think you look right now on a neutral field, what Vandy has done to this point, Mike, which is what this is, the body of work. I mean, listen, they beat Alabama. Like, there's a lot of teams that have not as good personnel of Alabama that. Vandy's ahead of in the power ranking. So you can't tell me they wouldn't have a shot to win on a neutral field. Yeah, putting them where you've got them at, at six tells me that that win against Alabama, you no longer see that as a fluke, right? No, like, I, I didn't see it as a fluke when it happened. I thought they whooped their ass, honestly. I mean, I and I know Bama's, they fell, right, in the rankings, and they deserve to. And I, I told you, by the way, right, last week, you were like, I'm, I got a beef with, hey, listen, when they lost, if they lost, they would fall accordingly because of not just that one loss, but how they've looked the last couple of weeks. But still, Bama's got personnel. Like I don't, I don't wipe away that win because it's like, well, Bama's just total trash. Now, I mean, they got ball players. Like, you yeah. know, for Vandy, so for Vandy to line up and beat them straight up, and yes, they forced some turnovers and they, but they lined up and just flat out beat them. So 
That says a lot to me about Vanderbilt. I do put stock in that. Yeah, I I, I like that. I like that thinking. Um, going back to the rankings here uh, before we move on to the Auburn Tigers, as we always do. Uh, look, uh, Billy Napier's holding it together down in Gainesville, best he can. Uh, I have I have no problem. Again, they put forty eight on that mm-hmm. Kentucky defense. It's a pretty good defense to move to two and two in the SEC. It's looking like. He's. It's going to be really tough to justify firing him with this schedule and what's going on in the conference this year. I think. I think Napier is one step closer to keeping his job. God, it was it seems like just yesterday that they they had called the board of trustees meeting to try to get together the money for his buyout. Um, but uh, the Auburn Tigers are at the bottom here. Before we get to them, Chris, though, uh, a quick word from our sponsors. This episode of the Auburn Express is brought to you by our friends at Joy Mode. Uh, If you're an Auburn fan, there may not be a lot of joy in your life, Chris, but Joy Mode has you covered. (laughs) Uh, So no matter how you choose to get over Auburn losing, uh, maybe it's in the bedroom. And Joy Mode's packets uh, will give you a little extra oomph for the boom boom after the loss. Uh, Visit tryjoymode.com and use code report for 20% off free shipping. Now, what is Joy Mode? Uh, Imagine a supplement like your favorite greens packet that you can put in six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before you do the deed and then bam 45 minutes later you're ready to do the magic joy mode has you covered we appreciate them for sponsoring the show again try joymode.com and use code report to get 20 percent off plus free shipping Chris, bring, bring a whole new meaning to find some joy <laughs> listen i don't judge i don't judge Neither do uh, I. um Chris, you got Auburn last, bottom of the league here. Now, uh, before we started recording, we both noted that the roster is probably better than the ranking. Absolutely is better. But the results matter here. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Yeah, first thing I I told you this off air, Mike, I I hope all the great Auburn folks tuned in don't take it personally. (laughs) Um, Because I think there's certainly a conversation to be had with Auburn and Oklahoma right now. But we did witness that game. Uh in first person and I think Auburn probably you could argue should have won that game but they didn't and that's kind of the story Auburn this year they 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 shouldn't be ranked 16th they should have beat Oklahoma they probably should have beat Mizzou yeah you let a guy that was in the hospital for 85 percent of the game come back and beat you in a I mean hold on time out pause was he was he not he went to the hospital they went to the hospital they they gave him the good shit at the hospital and came back reports are it was a high ankle sprain no way Bro comes back from a high ankle sprain unless maybe they he took joy mode. <laughs> maybe he took joy mode. I don't know. I, <laughs> d- they do have a, a thing in there about <laughs> athletic performance. Like it's not just for I'm just the boom saying. Boom. Yeah, just but, saying. Uh, um, look, I, yeah. I mean, I it's just Auburn's just finding mode. ways to lose. They're just. I don't trust that Auburn against anybody. And you got the game against Kentucky this weekend, Mike. And mm-hmm. you know, just to spoil it, spoiler. I've gone on record and. I'm, I'm I'm picking Kentucky. I just I I just I, I don't. It's probably going to follow the it. same script if you get to the end, close game, and it's at this point it. I think it's so mental, Mike, where it's like everybody probably whether you know on purpose or inadvertently, they're expecting something bad to happen, and I yeah. hate that. I hate that for Auburn. I hate that for the players more than anything because. I've been part of a bad team, by the way. Side note, Mike, like I played on, I played college baseball, D2, whatever. But I mean, I played on a team that was terrible. And when you get like that late in a season and it's like, man, you're just, you're expecting the worst and you're so ready for it to be over with. And I mean, you just, you hope that's not the mentality in the locker room, but man, these are human beings. Like at some point you're just like, well, here we are again. Can't wait to see how we blow it this week. Yeah, so. look, uh, four straight losses. A, a loss to Kentucky would make five straight losses. Uh, they will not have one since New Mexico. Auburn has not beat a Power 14 yet this season, Chris. Uh, so it's tough going for the Tigers right now. Now, I picked Missouri. I was the only one that had the courage in my camp to pick Missouri. I said, look, um, I want to pick Auburn. I believe they can win this game. I would not be surprised to see them win this game. But when you're finding ways to lose at the ends of games, it's tough. And I think it's even more disappointing because you had an extra week to prepare. This was you came off a bye week. And again, in critical situations, you can't execute your offense. Now, I will say this late in that game, Peyton Thorne made a pass that would have won the game. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the ball went right through Robert Lewis's hands. He's a transfer wide receiver from Georgia State. He absolutely has to catch that pass. Hugh Freeze talked about it at a press conference this morning that if that ball is caught, the game's over because you lost 21-17 and that would have put you up 24 uh, to not enough at that point, right? 13, I think they had. So it, it was it was really, really difficult. And, and, and I don't like to beat down on kids, but he, he's got to catch that pass. The same way the kicker comes in and then misses the chip shot field goal right after that. So you drive the ball down the field, your quarterback that's been struggling a little bit does the job on the road. He gets you in scoring position. He makes the good pass, and then you cannot make the catch. Uh, to me, the, the the issues go deeper. I think this is not really a, this is more than just a personnel issue. It's a coaching issue mm-hmm. when you're finding ways to lose, and it's this widespread. It's your kicker. It's your wide receivers. It's your quarterback. It's your offensive line. Defensively, Auburn has yet to give up 400 yards to a P4 opponent, and they're losing games. Mm-hmm. You held Georgia to 381, right? Like that's 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 good in in today's college football. We know what Carson Beck and those boys can do when they get going. Look what they did to Bama's defense. Put up 500 yards on those guys in their house. You held them to 381 and you lost. Auburn scored 10 points offensively in this game, even though they lost um, 21 to 17. So it should be noted that special teams contributed. And if you're only going to score 10 points, I I don't blame you for picking Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think that that's where they're at. You, you do. I, I will say, though, Mike, looking at that game, Kentucky might be in just as much disarray as you are with the way their season's going. I mean, since yeah. that old since that old Miss win, they've just kind of – it's like they just packed it up and took a vacation. I don't know what's really happened. So, uh, you know, you just – you hope the guys in the locker room with Auburn, the, the, the leadership is there to keep things positive, to stay together. Hopefully you run into that breakthrough moment, and then you know, it, it, turns the, it turns the mentality of the rest of your season that there are some – there are some SEC wins maybe to be had or just some wins to be had down the stretch. Cause obviously yeah. I mean, Mike, it goes without saying as the, as the losses pile up, man, it just, it gets tougher and tougher to rebound from it. And I, I agree with you though, Mike, it's, you know how you know it's deeper than personnel because this personnel isn't two and five personnel. It's, 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 it's coping. it goes so far beyond the talent. Uh, agreed. So really quickly before we get out of here again, you're picking Kentucky. Give me a score. The score I went with in the game, I will go 24 to 20. Kentucky 24, beats 20. Yeah, Ooh, I think they yeah. just barely cover. But again, I just it's not that I think Auburn cannot win the football game. Quite the contrary. I I think probably Auburn should win the football game. I just need to see them, Mike. I need to see them make the winning plays. Yeah. Winning plays that win you games. They just haven't done that this year. The spread's two and a half mm. points on this. So this is a pick 'em. And the matchup predictor on ESPN is essentially following the 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 odds here and saying look they're giving Kentucky a 51.4 percent chance to win at home again essentially that's a coin flip uh what's not a coin flip is that Chris Phillips will be back with me every week to talk about his power rankings before we get out of here tell people where they can find your stuff yeah Mike it's a blast man I thoroughly enjoy doing this every single week and you do a great job and with the war report and all of your content that you're doing on your different channels and you know just everything you're doing happy to see you having success but yeah we're uh, at SCC unfiltered X Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you get your content, YouTube, podcasts, and our website, secunfiltered.com. Guys, that's it for another great edition of the Auburn Express podcast, powered by the War Report with my guy, Chris Phillips. If you want more content like this, please hit like and subscribe. We are the War Report on every social media platform, TW Report on TikTok. Check out all our other content on YouTube as well. We, we have a live show on Wednesday night. Uh, that is great community and we'll make our SEC picks there uh, for the week and and talk about what we think we're going to see from Auburn on the weekend. We'll be back at you guys later this week with more content. We're signing off, but as always, we're even.